Praise the Lord, my family. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Somebody give our God a hand clap of praise. Hey, Facebook family. Hey, YouTube family. It is time to lift up the name of Jesus. It is first Sunday. We come to give our God a praise in this place. I need you to like, share, let everybody know your phone family is on. Again, I need you to like and share. Tell somebody it's time to celebrate our God. He is alive and well and we come to lift them up if you're ready let's do it together everybody clap your hands like this y'all might know this song i need you to do it just like this he's alive and well he's alive and well real simple today I get, oh he's alive and well he's alive and well y'all got it and then we're gonna pray like this say, oh he's alive and well he's alive and well I think y'all got it. Y'all ready? Come on. Oh, he's alive and well. He's alive and well. All right, I'm going to need y'all help. Let's do it together, family. Let's go. He's alive and well. He's alive and well. Oh, he's alive and well. He's alive and well. Oh, 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 he's alive and well. Oh
Sunday, our God is alive and well. If you love him, show some sign. Give God a way in this place. Father, we honor you because we know that you are alive and you're well and that you always provide for us. Somebody do me a favor. Just lift up your hands and say, thank you, Father, for being my provider. Sister Kay's going to come and take us away. She
Come on, keep praising him. Come on. The word is good to me. <laughs> I say it's good to me. Is he good to you? The word is good to me. I don't care what nobody else says, but the word is good to me. He's been so good to me. Come on, come on. I don't know about you, but he brought me a long way. Did anybody else? Come on. Come on. We want not always say, you remember where you come from. Come on. Come on. Come on. I don't know about you. Amen. So many people are going through. We go through, but God's word is good. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Come on. Come on. He says, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. I'm so glad that he works it out for my good. It may not look good or be good, but he's going to work it out for my good. The word is good to me. His promises are real. Anybody believe that? Woo, come on. We we'll act like it. Come on. Let's give him a praise. Come on. Let's thank him. For the Bible said, all things give thanks. Word is good to me. Woo. I don't know about you. Come on. But I know I wouldn't be here without the word. Oh, God, he's so good to me. He's so wonderful. You may be seated in his presence. Amen. Isn't the Lord good? Guess what, everybody? It's conference time. I said, wait a minute. Y'all missed it. Let's try that again. It's conference time. some ladies to help me out. Come on. Somebody don't understand what God is going to do this week. How he's going to heal and set the captives free. Somebody don't understand. There shall be miracles, signs, and what somebody don't really understand. Come on. Come on. God is going to do something in, in this house. Somebody don't understand. Souls going to be saved. Ha. People going to be healed. People are going to be set free. I, 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 I say, come on. Somebody just don't understand. He's going to me. Come on. We have set the atmosphere. We have prayed. We have sought the presence of God. We have anointed every seat. They don't know what's going to happen. The musicians going to be on point. Praise him on point. We on point. I'm just waiting. Come on. Wait and see that the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures generations. I don't know about you. I'm excited. You better bring her. Huh? If they didn't register, you better tell them we got day passes. We got night passes, rather. Come at night. Only 49 night you can still get in. Thursday night, the 11th. Ha! Huh? Dr. Courtney and Walter, we're going to pray first. You better be here. 615, doors open. Prayer, 630, you better be ready to pray. Set it again. Ah, praise and worship. After that, the word is going to be so good. And then on Friday, Dr. Nasmith is going to be in the house. You better be here early. But I don't care where you sit. You're going to be 
blessed in every seat. We touched every row. We touched every seat. We touched the pulpit. Every chair. Every instrument has been anointed by God. We're going to pray. Worship going to go forth. Come on, mom and dad's coming forth. And then the one and only. Dr. Sharon Nesbitt. I believe some more miracles. I believe some more signs. I believe some more wonders. Then on Saturday, Pastor Matt and Lady T. Prayer. Prophetic. A word for you. Word for you. Word for you. And better believe it, a word for me. Then the bishop across the street in the luncheon. Wise man of God. Come on, y'all ready? And then on Sunday, here she is. Here she is. With the Holy Ghost. I can't do nothing. But the man upstairs can do it all. Hey! I am nothing, but he's everything. today. God is going to start it off today with our vision. Come on, somebody. I can't wait. Get blessed today. You ain't got to wait till next week. Huh? The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. Oh, the presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the devil got to go. Ha! Ain't no playing around today. The presence of the Lord is here. Here, here, here. All right, I got to go, y'all. Let's get ready. Tune up. Tune up. Holy Ghost said, I'm waiting on you. Tune up. Tune up. Come on, the pastor, man. Get me out of this thing. Hey. Can you get ready? Hey. I said, get ready. I'm ready for God. I wait till late this week. God coming today, today, the day you hear my voice, huh? hard not your heart, the word is true. Come on, Pastor Man. Hey, he's good, 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 good. Turn around in your seat, walk around where you sit. Turn around and say, come on, tell God to come on in here. Come on, come on. Come on, tell God to come on. We're going to baptize today. We're going to have communion today. Soul's going to be saved today. Come on, come on. It's here, it's here, it's here. It's here. Come on, dude. Somebody ought to put your hands together all over the room. I dare you begin to just think about the goodness of Jesus. Come on, think about it for a second. How good is he? Come on, how good is he? How good is he? Coming off a of resurrection Sunday last week, I just think there ought to be a little overflow of the goodness of Jesus. And we should be in a place of God. I thank you. <laughs> Come on, put your hands together real big all over the room for Pastor Brenda. Getting this hype. <laughs> somebody say it's going to be a good week. It's going to be a good week. Tell somebody else it's going to be a good week. It's going to be a good week. I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord. Can y'all clap one more time, one more time. God is so good. <laughs> you may be seated. You may be seated. I <laughs> I see how my dad be feeling sometimes when I be all hyped up and he come up here and my mama gave me a taste of my own medicine, huh?
part of the reason why it's so interesting, and I have a moment of where it's, it's getting clear sometimes what my dad be going through, is that when you, when you sense the atmosphere and what God wants to do or what needs to be done, and you're trying to find out how to get there, <laughs> and you're coming off a hype moment, you're coming off an exciting moment, and you're conflicted on the inside because you know that something needs to take place. And I just feel that God wants to deal with some people on a personal level today. I feel like there is a need to remember that if God be for us, he's more than the whole world against us. And it's a time for us to remember it with a, not just a, from an informational place, but to begin to tell our entire beings who we serve and who we believe holds the answers to everything we're facing. And I think sometimes we slip. Everybody say slip. Not intentional, not because we don't understand, but sometimes we slip. What I mean by slip is we slip into losing our expectation for God to move. We slip from, and we lose our expectation for God to speak, for God to answer, for God to deal with, for God to shake things up. And I think when we lose expectation, we almost block out the possibility for God to be God in your situation. So I don't have the transition in mind or the flow, but I believe there's some people in the room who need a touch from God. And without all of the stuff that could probably help you get there, I just want you to meet me at the altar. If that's you, if you need God to touch, shake, move, you have good church, we can get real excited, but if we miss giving God the chance to be God, I, I it might be at a women's conference anointing, them prayer warriors came in here this week. Was it Friday morning? 6 a.m. They were in the building touching seats and laying oil. But I believe God wants to start touching you now. Thing is, the enemy only gets access because he gets in our thought process. He steals something that's so important. I don't think we realize the power of a thing called hope. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. But if we lose hope, there's no reason to look to God. <laughs> so we have a people in his house, but no hope to believe him to move. So what I want you to do before we pray, I want you to begin to find those areas of no hope. What is hope? Bishop defines it like this, hope is a desire. First, it starts with a desire. How many of us have lost, you don't raise your hand, have lost desire? We lost desire because we don't have a hope that the desire can ever manifest. So it's the hope is the desire held, and the key word the Lord put in my spirit too before I got up here, in expectation. Which means it's a desire that I do all I can to sustain my expectancy of that desire manifesting in my life. 
with the belief it's going to happen. I need y'all to say that. It's going to happen. Oh, my God. And you ain't said that in a minute. You haven't said it in a minute. If you be honest, you lost that on the inside, that, it, that, that it's going to happen. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to just say that to yourself until you begin to charge that belief and that hope. It's going to happen. See that thing. It's going to happen. It is going to happen. I know everything has been telling you it's not going to happen, but those things were not considering God. Come on, come on, come on. I need you to, I need you to get a little bit more, a little bit more God dependent, a little bit more confident. It, it's going to happen. Some of y'all done stopped saying it already. You know, I need you to keep on saying This ain't a religious moment. This ain't a hype moment. I need you to look at that thing and begin to say, it is. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Now, some of it, you've even been deciding if you wanted it to happen because you, you had given up on the fact that it's going to happen. But I need you to start talking back to all of that doubt, talking back to all of that fear, talking back to all of that frustration, and hey, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. If, if, if God be for you, he's more than everything against you. It's going to happen. It's going. I want you to say it to you get some swag when you say it. It's, it's going to happen. It is going to happen. It is going to happen. Yes, it is. If you believed it before, I want you to believe it again. I want you to go back and find that confidence that you lost. Uh, there was a season in your life where you felt the confidence and you and you felt the drive and you, and you felt the energy and you felt the passion. But somewhere along the line, the enemy has been choking out. But today you came into the house of God where he wanted to breathe on your hope. He wants to breathe. I can get you to get out of tradition for a moment and let God breathe. Let him breathe on you. I need a little more of you somehow. I need him to breathe on you. Get in conference mode. Do something. I need, I need this atmosphere to be conducive for God to breathe. God wants to breathe on his people today. He wants to breathe on it. He wants to breathe, but you have to participate. You got to participate. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. If you, if you, if you've been convinced to where the fire is completely dead, that it's, that you just like, you know what, I'm just giving up on whatever it is. I don't know what, I don't care if it was a dream from the time you were five. I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is, but if you want to let it die, you on the, you at the wrong place right now. You at, today is not the day to be up here because I believe the Lord wants to bring life to some dark and, and desolate places. I'm trying to say something in here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It ain't enough attitude up here, is it? I want you to. The way I see this is there's a role that we have to play. There's a role you got to play. God comes to strengthen us. In the fight. Yea, though I walk through the valley. Which means, I need you to, what I need you to hear is that there's a role that you have to play. You got to walk. Not yea, though I sit. Yea, though I lay. It's yea, though I walk. Walking implies action. Walking implies perseverance. Walking also implies I realize what I'm up against, but I'm walking. I'm walking. I'm walking. Even when I'm treading, I'm walking. Even when, even when my feet get heavy, I'm walking. I'm walking. I am not standing. I'm not, I'm not sitting. I'm not stopping. I'm walking. And guess what? I will fear no evil. 
and your rod and your staff. What does he mean by that? It's your direction that's going to guide me as I walk. When I fight to do what I know you want me to do. When I fight to be who I know you want me to be. I'm going to have a comfort. That I mean, even if I'm walking through a storm, I have a comfort because I'm doing what the best I know to do, which is to follow you. That's the staff. But it says, your rod is with me too, which means you corrected me because I'm going to make some mistakes on this walk. I'm going to make some bad choices. I may get into my feelings. I may do some things I shouldn't do, but your rod, your rod going to correct me, and I'm going to let you correct me. I'm going to let you show me what I'm missing, and I'm not going to fight you, and I'm going to find comfort in the fact that, oh, I messed that up, but I grew in the process. I, I grew in the, yeah, I, I see that now, Lord. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. I responded the wrong way. I got it, but that's, that's why I received your correction, and your rod is comforting me because I'm better than I was last. Time. I know I know I messed up, but the next time, God, I'm not going to react like that. I'm not going to respond like that. I'm not going to do that. Thank you, God, for, for letting your rod of correction be with me. Correct me, God. Put me together, God. Shape me, God. I ain't trying to act like I'm perfect. I need to be imperfect so your rod can come in. And, and I ain't running from your discipline. I ain't running from your correction. I want all you got to give me, Father. Teach me, teach me, teach me, teach me. Thank you for not giving up on me. Just teach me. Teach me. Teach me. The Lord says, I'm teaching you. I ain't mad at you. I'm teaching you. I'm showing you them weak areas. I'm showing you that attitude. I'm showing you that short temper. I'm showing you that, that distance. I'm showing you those walls. That's why I didn't go right, because I need you to see it so I can put my rod on you, so I can correct you. I hear the Lord say, I'm correcting you. But don't lose expectation while I'm shaping you. God is, God is working on you from the inside right now. Just give him a little bit of time. He, he says, I'm shaping you. And I'm correcting you because I love you. And I know that you had a way you wanted to see it go. I know you wanted it to be a quick fix. I know you wanted it to be one and done. I know you wanted the first time you went out for you to win. I know the first time you apologized for it to be corrected. The first time you did this, he says, but I'm shaping you. I'm, I'm about to leave you alone, but I'm going to pray for you. The Lord says, if I, would have, if I would have, some of us have been looking for God to do the miraculous and just fix stuff. And God says, the only problem with me doing that is that you would still be the same. I need y'all to hear me, please. He says, if I would have just came and, and, and fixed it, you'd still be the same. There's something about the fight, the struggle, the growth, the confusion, the grit, the frustration. It shapes you. It molds you. The Bible says that he is a potter and I'll be the clay. The clay doesn't determine the shape it becomes. It shapes you. People of God, there's a person you must be to have what you desire. It is not, it is not a luck. It is not a chance. It is a person that you must become, and the Lord hears you praying. Lord, why is it not working? He said, it is. I'm shaping you. I couldn't put you there in that old mindset. I couldn't put you there in those old generational mindsets. I couldn't put you there. I couldn't give you that when you got this stuff that you don't see. And it's not that I don't want you to have it, but I'm trying to shape you. But I can't shape you if you lose hope, if you lose trust, if you get out the fight, then you're going to stay where you are. 
Lift your hands up as high as you can, please. Please, and I'm, I feel like it's a whole training thing right here, but the Lord is, he got to deal with somebody. I don't know if he going to get to everybody, but you got to determine if he going to get to you. But I need you to tell the Lord right now, your God, God, shape me. Lord, I surrender, God. I, I just want to be who you want me to be. I just want to be who you called me to be. I just want to be who I need to be. I just want to be. I want to be. I don't want to just have. I want to be. I want to be the person. I want to be the place where you live. I want to be the place. I want to be the victory that I desire. I want to be that mature product. I want to be that finished product. I want to be that joy. I don't just want good stuff to happen. I want to walk with joy. I want to have peace in my storms. I want to see my struggles and believe that you are a way maker. Come on. Come on, I need you to make that determination right now. Lord, I am. I am going to be that person. I am God. I am. I am victorious. I'm about my hot shot. I am God. I'm, I'm strong enough to win. I, I shall see victory. It is not over. It is not. I am. I am capable. I am able. I am lovable. I am kind. I am not a product of my environment. I am not a product of my lineage. I am your child. I am moldable. I can be more than I've ever dreamed of. There's nothing wrong with me that you can't fix. There's nothing wrong with me that you can't shape. There's nothing about me that you can't deal with. I am not a lost cause. I am yours. I am yours. I am yours. I need you to touch yourself, pat yourself, and say, why not me? Why not me? Come on, think about that. Why, why, why not me? God knew me when he let me have this dream. He knew me when he exposed me. God is not a teaser, I'm trying to tell you. He would not put you around, put you in sight, put you in proximity of that which he didn't know or would, would, wouldn't want to give you the opportunity to possess. Say, why not me? I need you to get that in your spirit. Why not me? Why not me? And I want to speak as a man of God. It is for you. That dream, that desire, that peace, that communication channel, that confidence, that authority, that knowing, that power, it is for you. He says, I could touch your situation, but watch this. If your situation don't get fixed, I still got you. No, y'all ain't hurt me. Y'all ain't hurt me. No, because I'm trying to show you how to deal with your God. See, he says, listen, if your situation don't, don't even get fixed, if that other person involved, if those people, if that opportunity, if that door, he says, listen, I'm shaping you. I'm shaping you. I'm shape. Will you let me shape you? Will you let me shape you? Will you let me teach you how to think? Teach you how to function? Teach you how to move? Teach you how to fight? Teach you how to grind? Teach you how to grow? Will you let me shape you? Will you let me shape you? Or are you going to give me contingent faithfulness? Are you only trying to use me for your desire? Or will you let me shape you? Will you let me develop you? Will you trust me? I just want to, I know we've taken time, but I, Lady CJ taught us last week, we're not supposed to be bound. So we got to stop settling for bondage. We're not supposed to be disheartened. We're not supposed to lose hope. So we're not going to take it no more. Somebody say, we're not taking it anymore. So anytime it ain't how I, if I ain't in the fight with confidence, I'm not taking it anymore. I understand there will be fights. There will be growth. There will be shaping. There will be correction. But I'm going to always expect to win.
There's a saying in the street, I'm a win or I'm a die trying. But you won't catch me settling for less. You won't catch me sitting in mess. You won't catch me giving up because I know greater is he that lives in me. I know who he is. I, I know what he can do. I know he's got a plan. My thoughts are not his thoughts. and My ways are not his ways. And I trust the Lord. I trust the Lord. I'm getting out your way. Somebody say, I trust the Lord. Watch this. Say, if it don't work how I think, it's going to be better than I could have ever thought. You ain't heard me. You ain't heard me. You ain't heard me yet. Because you're about to get a swag to you. You're about to get a confidence to you. Yeah, because I know you got plans. I know you. But, but if it don't work how I think, it's going to be better than I ever thought. Not because of me, but because I'm going to let them correct me. I'm going to let them shape me. I'm going to get out better than I ever went in. Because I serve a living God. I serve a living God. I serve a living God. I don't serve an idea. I don't serve a concept. I serve a living God. And he pays attention to me. And he works on me. And he shapes me. And he talks to me. And he corrects me. And yeah, I got issues, but, but he loves me. And he covers me. And he pushes me. change his mind about you if it don't work how I think it's gonna be better than I ever thought if it don't work how I think it's gonna be better than you ever could imagine because you don't see the door you don't see the change you don't see what's on the other side I'm trying to get out your way I remember who you are and who I am is yours. Who you are and who I am is yours. I remember who you are, who you are. And guess what? Who I am is yours. I remember who you are, who you are. And what else? And who I am is yours. I remember who you are. When I get discouraged, I, I remember who you are. Who you are. And who I am is yours. I remember who you are. When I look at situations, and they get dim. I remember who you are. You parted the Red Sea. You caused the blind to see. You raised the dead. You caused babies to come to bearing wounds. I remember who you are and who I am. Who I am is yours. That's why I gave my life to you. Cause I remember who you are. I checked the records. I looked at your history. I looked at your credentials. I remember who you are. Who I am is yours. I remember who you are. I remember 
Come on, let's give God a praise in this building. Come on, let's lift up adoration to the Lord in this building. This is the house of the Lord. Come on, let's lift up our adoration. Come on, let's lift up a praise to God in this building. Let's lift up the praise to God in this building. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. Come on, give God more than that. Come on, give him a little more than that. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Even when we're not worthy, he's worthy. He's worthy. He has not forgotten about you. He has not given up on you. He is not ignoring you. He is not ignoring you. He's shaping you. Will you trust him without condition? Will you trust him to be God? Will he be sovereign? Will he be Lord? Will you let him be king? There's a spirit of submission in the house tonight. And this morning, excuse me, God says, if you submit to me, I'll shape you. If you submit to me, I will mold you. I will let you see the goodness. I, the Bible says, he who began the good work is faithful to complete it. But we got to stop fighting. We got to stop fighting God. We got to stop trying to, to, to compete with the Stop trying to hold on to one thing and then chase him on the other hand. God says, submit to me. Shut your mouth if you ain't saying what I'm saying. Speak what I say to you. There's a grace coming over us. There's a grace to build in the house. There's a grace to build, but the enemy has been using your own mouth. He's been using your own stubbornness to block the plan of God in your life. But today, 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 from the front of the church to the back of the church, from the front of the church to the back of the church, today there is deliverance and submission in the house of the Lord. There is submission to the will of God. Today, today, today you will say yes. You will say yes. I need you right from your seat to say yes, God. I don't care what they did. I don't care what they said. I don't care what happened. I say yes. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what my spouse said. I don't care what my best friend said. I say yes. Somebody's miracle is peace in their mind. Somebody's miracle is hope for their future. Somebody's miracle is getting through a day without arguing. Somebody's miracle is being able to believe and trust again. Somebody's miracle is actually feel like getting dressed in the morning. Somebody's miracle is putting yourself together and walking outside. Today, say yes. Somebody's miracle is having family dinner at the table. Today, say yes. Come on, say yes today. Say yes today. Yes. Yes, Lord. I will do what I know I should have been doing. I will do, I will say what I know I should be saying. I'm not justifying disobedience anymore. I'm ready. I'm ready to trust you to shape me. I'm ready to be everything that comes with giving my life to you. I don't care what it looked like. I don't care what people say about it. I don't care what I got to walk away from. I'm ready to let you be God. You be God and I'm going to trust you. 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 You know, and we got some of the best leaders in the whole wide world, Bishop, Pastor. 
but nobody knows you like your God knows you. And God knows every single one of your desires. He knows every single one of your struggles, every single one of your circumstances, and he also knows that you only see part of the story. You want to know God? why God has been patient with you? Because he knows you only can see a little bit. I ain't mad at you for how you stopped, how you stalled, how you stagnated. I know you can only see a little bit. So today, as you say yes to me, I'm going to give you another wind. I, I, I see it right now. I see, I see, I see when you're going to look for your snap, it won't be there. I'm giving you another wind. And I, I release in the if, testimony upon testimony of life changing things. Family increases, peace in your house, confidence in your life. You're going to try stuff you ain't never tried. You're going to do stuff you've never done. You're going to write things down that you haven't written down in forever. And God says, because I'm doing miracles in this house. I gotta. Today's a new day. Because all that was waiting, God was waiting on was for was a real yes. A yes to be shaped, a yes to be molded. I need you. I, if, if you, oh my God, I'm, I, I'm trying to get out of here. It ain't enough time for me to touch you, but God can touch you right now. It ain't enough time for me to walk through, but God can touch you right now. I need you to believe in your God more than you believe in anything else. Get up on your feet and lift your hands and say, Lord, touch me. Lord, touch me. Lord, touch me. Touch me, God. I, I'm reaching out to you. I'm stretching my hands to you. I'm giving you my situation. Come on, somebody. This is the house of the Lord God and where his presence is there is deliverance and there is liberty I need you to get out out of every limitation and say Lord I stretch myself to you come on stretch out stretch out I feel the resistance and I ain't got time to break it stretch out push 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 yourself push yourself push yourself Lord I submit I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. With your hands lifted. With your hands lifted. With your eyes closed. Lord, touch me. Touch me. touch me to do I understand Lord that I have a role to play I have things that I have to commit to things that I have to fight through because your ultimate goal is to build me repeat that to me say God I understand that you are more concerned than with building me than blessing me. So God, come on, so God, no longer will I focus on you blessing me. Do whatever you got to do to build me. Because when I am built, There is not a blessing that can stay away from me. Come on, I need you to I need you to listen to what we're saying. Because Lord, if you just bless me and I stay broken, what good is that? So God, today I submit to you. Build me. Oh, come on, somebody. You gotta talk to your God and let it get in your spirit. Lord, today. My prayers change. 
build me. Come on, talk to him. Now you say what you got to say in your own words. You say what you got to say. Lord, build me, build me. You got about 30 seconds. You and God. If you could embrace the heart of God, Lord, I realize I've been asking for you to do stuff, not realizing that I would stay the same. Oh, but today I got a shift in my mind. Shape me. Shape me. Oh, if I could show you the things that's taking place right now in the spirit. Shape me. I understand that's going to mean some correction. I understand that may mean some discomfort, but Lord, build me. Make me better. Make me better. Because if I'm better, I won't need so much. And the Lord said, the reason you think you need so much because you're not better. Lord, build me. Teach me to appreciate what you've already done. Teach me to see you when I wake up in the morning. You've already been good. Been good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, put your hands together all over the room. Come on, clap like you know you just got victory. Come on, you ain't clapping like you just won a battle that you didn't even know you were fighting. Clap like you got new life. Give your God a praise like you've been rejuvenated, like you've been in, like he heard your cry. Like you serve a God who knew exactly, exactly what you needed this morning and would not let another day go by without shaking your situation. I need you to give God a better sense of gratitude than that. You know like I know just another day was not enough today. You know like I know that only God could move and do what he did today. Only God could have made sure you got what you got today. I need you to give God a praise like you appreciate how much he knows you how much he takes time to know you. There are billions of people in this world, but God decided to stop by 9801 Chalmers because he knew you were going to be there. He looked at your life. He looked at your situation. And yeah, it was cool, but he decided today enough was enough. High five your neighbor and say, that's exactly what I needed. That's exactly what I needed. Tell somebody else, I'm better now. I don't know what part of your life, but tell somebody, hey, they better watch out for me. I say, I'm an animal when I get motivated. I'm a beast when I believe. I go crazy when I know what's up. Or when, when I decide it's over. Or, or listen. See, you done done some things. I, you, I dare you brag on yourself for a minute. Oh, when I set my mind, you better look out. I'm trying to tell you, it's about to be crazy. We've been declaring it and we ain't said it in a while. I dare you say 2024. 
And this is my year for more. The enemy might have got me twisted over the first three and a half months. But if he knew what was about to take place, if he knew when he just woke up, I ain't quitting on nothing. Oh, that, I think we just said something. I'm trying to get out of here. I heard the Lord say, I ain't quitting on nothing. I ain't quitting on nothing, Mimi. Somebody was trying to figure out how to make do. I heard the Lord say, I ain't quitting on nothing. I'm winning in all that. All that, kid. All that. Not just one of them, all of them. Every single door, I'm going to stroll my tail through. I ain't picking doors. I'm going through every single door. The enemy done got me twisted. He done got me messed up. He didn't know who I was. He done almost messed me around the one. He almost got me to give up on myself. But I just thought about it. I get one shot to give God the most glory I got on this earth. And I ain't giving, I ain't cheating God out of nothing. I ain't waiting on another life. I ain't waiting on another week. I'm going to get it all. Some of y'all ain't saying nothing. Because you done quit. I ain't quitting no nothing. I ain't quitting no nothing. I ain't quitting in my home. I ain't quitting in my business. I ain't quitting in my health. I ain't quitting in my money. I ain't quitting. I ain't quitting on nothing. Watch my prayer life go up. Watch my worship go up. Watch my power go up. Watch my discipline go up. Watch me get my tail up in the morning and do what I got. Cause I ain't quitting on nothing. I need somebody with some attitude in the house this morning. I need somebody to make the devil real mad. He should have let you sleep in this morning. He should have let you lay your tail somewhere else. But you done messed around and came in here. I ain't quitting on nothing. I'm breaking every habit. I'm breaking every addiction. I'm breaking every single stronghold. I ain't quitting on nothing. About 32 of y'all got it. But I need the rest of y'all to get it. I ain't quitting on nothing. if you have to but I ain't worried about you dancing I'm worried about you not quitting I need you to get on your feet and clap your hands talk to yourself I don't care what you got to do I really ain't got no more time but you got to leave here saying you ain't quitting on nothing All right, y'all done messed up. Just get you, look, look at you one person and say, you okay with losing in that? No, I want you to ask them, are you, are you okay losing in that? Or are you ready to go get everything God paid for? I just,
just need to know if I, maybe I'm sitting next to the wrong person because I don't need you to rub off on me. I, you got every right to choose to stay where you at, but I just need to know now so I can get a roll call of who rocking on my roll. I know, I know, I know we've been doing church for years, but I, I just need you not to miss that you can't quit on nothing. I, I need you, to, I just need you to, I need that to get in your spirit. I need you to have that all up in your mind. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't quit, I ain't quit on nothing. I'm going back out there and I'm gonna have a meet. I'm going to knock on somebody's door. I'm about to go down and write some plan out because I ain't quitting on nothing. I only got one chance. I need somebody to yell one shot. You gonna waste it? You ain't you gonna waste it? With all that anointing on the inside of you, with the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you, God done gave his only son to die, put his Holy Spirit with power to live inside of you, and you gonna sit back and do nothing? You got one shot! We don't know how many years, we don't know how many decades, we don't know how much time, but I dare you tell the Lord, I'm gonna give you my best shot. I'm gonna take my one shot, and I'm gonna give him my best shot. You about to get it. You about, I, we took all this time. I don't know what Bishop gonna tell me later, but we took all this time to tell the devil, I'm gonna give him my best shot. I'm gonna I'm talk this talk. I'm gonna walk this walk. I'm gonna look you in your face and I'm gonna say it's gonna get my best shot. Wait till I get up out of here and get back to my notebook. Wait till I get out of here and get back to my desk. Wait till I get out of here and get back to my pen and paper. I'm going to give it my... He paid too much for us to have do it. He paid, we just got finished celebrating the greatest payment in human history. He paid too much. Somebody say, my one shot gonna be my best shot. Nah, yeah, I need, some, I need, I need a little bit. I'm getting out your way. I promise I am. I promise I'm getting out. I really am. But I, I just need, you know, we, we on the east side of Detroit, and I don't hear enough east side in you. I know you might be from the west side, but you're on the east side. And I need to hear a little more east side in you. I need you to say, my one shot gonna be my best shot. Look at your homeboy, look at your homegirl, look at your husband, look at your wife, look at your boo thing and say, hey, my one shot gonna be my best shot. Find you a friend, find you. Say, look, say, you, you, this the luckiest day of your life because you about to give my best. It ain't about how much you deserve it. You done messed around and... Cause my one shot, John is gonna be my best shot. I ain't sleeping on myself. They might have slept on me, but I ain't sleeping on me. Messed up, messed up, let me remember who I am. Do you know me? Do you know how much time and energy and effort God put into forming me and shaping me and putting me together? I'm done, man. My one shot gonna be my best shot. Give God a praise, the best praise you got. This praise gotta be personal, though. This praise gotta be personal, though. 
Give him your best praise. They ain't got to play another note. Give him your best praise. Because you won't have an organ when you got to shoot the shot. You won't have drums when you got to shoot the shot. You won't have a keyboard when you got to shoot the shot. Bishop may not be standing right there to tell you when you got to shoot the shot, but my one shot. If I had time to waste, I could be mad at you. If I had time to waste, I could waste time playing with you. But I only got one shot to give God glory. If I got to shoot it on one leg, if I got to shoot it with one hand, if I got to shoot it on one foot, if I got to shoot it minus a toe, if I got to shoot it with one eye closed, I guess you gave it to you one thing. My one shot is going to be my best shot. If I got to... Oh, y'all about to mess me up. Because somebody the enemy will give you an excuse. You ain't got this. This ain't going right. This person don't believe in you. But guess what, baby? It's going to get my best shot. Anybody ready? Anybody ready to go after it all? The Bible says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul, how you think, how you feel, how you carry yourself, how you see yourself, that's got to prosper. It's your season. Yes, sir. It's your time. Come on, somebody. That's right on top of it, Pastor. Say, it's my time. We walking right into the women's conference the week. The men, we going to be there too. We not excluded. Somebody say, it's my time. It's my time. It's my time. It's my time. We worship you. <laughs> it's my time. Lord of the breakthrough. Lord of the breakthrough. We worship you. I don't know if y'all know, but that's what's happened today. It's been breakthrough. You know why? Because he is Lord of the breakthrough. the Lord of the breakthrough. We worship you. Lord of the breakthrough. Lord of the breakthrough. You are the Lord of the breakthrough. And we worship you. We worship you. All right. Okay. Put your hands together for your Lord. Okay, we do have to close this part, y'all. But I don't want you to close it religiously. I want to close it very non-traditionally. I want us to have a 60-second moment of silence between you and your God. Where you bow your head and you make commitment between you and him. Seal the moment. Commit. In the face of all adversity. I want shot. You will be my best God.
Put your hands together all over the room in victory for you. Fountain family, friends, guests, it is time to worship the Lord in our giving. Can we celebrate God all over the room? Come on, he's worthy. He's so worthy. He's so worthy. He's so worthy, y'all. Now listen, y'all make sure y'all be faithful in y'all giving so I don't get in trouble. No. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. Uh, there are several ways that you can give. You can download our app in the app store, See the Fountain, S-E-E, -E, the Fountain. You can give through text. And, uh, you could text to the number 28950. Those of you watching online, you see it on the screen. It's actually on all of our screens, but I'll still give it in case you need it. You can text to the number 28950, and then in your message, you're going to type F-O-T space to the amount you want to give. You can give through Cash App, which is what I do dollar sign, see the fountain, S-E-E, -E, the fountain. You can go to our website, www.seethefountain.com. Then we also have a Zelle now, y'all. You can uh, send your offering or tithe through Zelle. ZaleTheFountain at gmail.com is our Zelle email. ZaleTheFountain at gmail.com. And last but not least, you can give through PayPal. Uh, admin at see the fountain is the email address you're going to PayPal to. Oh, and those of you who are watching online or those of you who may be waiting on something, you can mail your offerings in at 9801 Chalmers Avenue, Detroit, Michigan, 48213. Our wonderful, beautiful, faithful ushers are walking through the aisle. If you would like to give a way of card or cash, please put your name on your seat. Uh, you can fill out an envelope right there. And if you don't get an envelope, put it in the comments. This is my tithe, 10% of what God allows me to manage. I give back to him. Or if you're sowing for something, believing for something, do that as well. Put it in those comments. We're believing for God to do supernatural things. You are about to change the game. If you can hold on to what God has awakened in you today. Literally, I see families being healed. Bodies being healed. Health being transformed. Doors of opportunity and finance being opened. Vision awakening and coming alive. God's going to send provision for the visions he's giving you. And you will see supernatural breakthrough in your life. Clap your hands one more time. If you are prepared to give or you've already given through one of the digital platforms, can you stand to your feet wherever you are? If you're still preparing your offering, we'll wait on you. We know you got to bring yourself, get yourself back together. But just stand when you're ready so we'll all know we're prepared to worship the Lord together. We like to do it together. Yes, it's personal, but we like, like to at least acknowledge the moment together. When you come to the front, you can take a few seconds, place your offering on the seed or tithe on the seed and wish for a prayer, a prayer of faithfulness or a prayer of belief. If you've already given through a digital platform, still come in unity and touch the altar. Say, Lord, and say whatever it is you need to say between you and him. We have a few people who are still preparing and we're okay with that. Take your time. It's personal. It's between you and God. The fountain is a place that believes in tithing. We believe that God gives us everything that we have. Even if we go to work, it's God who allows us the ability to go to work. So we show that we understand we are not of those who are confused. God, you get a tenth of everything you give me. And if you want more, God, you can show ahead, give me more. Anybody agree with that? Amen. And if I want less, I can give you less. No. Seriously. Let's, we have a few more that we're still waiting on. We'll give them a few seconds. A few seconds and we'll pray together. Giving is personal. We do it collectively. But at the same time, it's our faith in him. If you do not have anything to give today, Stand to your feet anyway, so we can all be standing together. It's only a couple. We believe that God will move on your situation. But today, say, God, I'll be faithful. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for loving us and for knowing us. Thank you for not trapping us in tradition but loving us enough to pull us out of 
our comfort zone, our cycle. And God, I thank you that today with this seed, this seed of my worship, this seed that I just gave him praise, the seed of your word into my life, and the seed that I'm about to place on this altar, with these seeds, you will start a new cycle in my life, a cycle of blessing, a cycle of growth, a cycle of confidence, hope, possibility, and faith, production, manifestation, all watered by the water of expectation in your word. Touch us, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. See our hearts. We offer our best to you because you have definitely given us your best. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Somebody say amen. You may come from all over the room and lay your offerings on the altar. We'll move forward. Come on, put your hands together all over the room. God is so good. Anybody feel recharged? Come on, let's receive our praise team as they come. Put your hands together one more time in the room. Can we stand on our feet really quick? Come on, we want to worship the one who stands forever. God, we thank you in this room. We give you glory and we give you honor right now in the mighty name of Jesus. So go. We won't be quiet, and we won't be ashamed, and we'll keep confessing that Jesus you reign. No matter how long, we'll keep on praising, yeah. nothing can stop you. Will remain always. You'll stay forever. You stay forever. You stay forever. You stay forever. Say, we won't be quiet. Say, and we won't be ashamed. And we'll keep. Oh, Jesus, you reign over oh, my yeah, yeah, yeah. No matter how long, we'll keep praising we'll him. Praise. Say, nothing can stop nothing you. Can stop you. Say, you will remain. You stand, you stand forever. Oh, my King, you stand forever. Say, you stand.
for us. Say, we won't stop. Sing, call me on, call me on. Call me on, hey. Come on, sing call it out. Call me on, hey. We yeah. won't stop. Say, we're seeking, seeking. Seeking your face. Seeking your face. One more time. We, we won't stop. stop.
place we was Calling your name, calling your name we walk Seeking your name Cause you stand forever Stand forever You stand forever Stand forever Say go You stand Seeking your face, won't stop seeking your face. You are my desire. You are my desire. Ah. You are my desire.
your prayer, I sing your Can we say that? Put your hands together one more time. Come on, give him a real praise. Come on, give him a real praise. We're getting ready. God bless the praise team. We're getting ready to make a transition from our services into communion. God has been good to us today. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Since his presence. Just last week we were celebrating resurrection morning. And then God gave us opportunity this week to come and take communion. To honor his death, burial, and resurrection. If it should be personal to you by now, if you understood resurrection morning, we cannot live this life without him. Christianity is not just another religion. Christianity is a way of life based on a trusting relationship, personal trusting relationship with Jesus Christ through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And so we come to this table to tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. And it's just not ordinary time to come and say thank you. For if he had not died, we would not be able to live. He's given us a right once again to the tree of life. So I just need you to shift your mind a little bit. For without him, there is no life. And it's personal. So we're going to ask God's blessings over the sacraments as we shift those who are watching by way of streaming. And if you prepare your crackers or your toast or your wafer, your bread, your orange juice or grape juice, whatever you have, I want you to prepare it now as we shift and I'm going to ask God blessings over your sacrament that he would change it from its carnal use to a spiritual use and that it be a means of fellowship. We are spirit beings living in physical bodies, possessing a soul. It's our time now to make a decision, a choice that we honor him who paid for it all. If we're ready, let's just make that shift. Gracious and all wise, eternal God, we thank you now for this moment that we're about to enjoy. We thank you for all that you paid, that we would have this right, this opportunity, this spirit. We thank you for calling us out of darkness into this marvelous light. Now, God, we ask to sanctify this moment, this session with us. Thank you for the believers who have gathered together. And I pray now, God, that you would bless this table, that you would bless this bread or this wafer and this juice, that you would change it from a natural use to a spiritual use. Let it represent your broken body and your shed blood. God, we pray that it would be life unto us as we partake and drink and that we would take a, a trip to Calvary's Hill and see the price that you paid. And of all the scriptures, you only said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. So God, we're here to, to say thank you. And we do remember, so sanctify, I pray, this table and this moment as we partake of your broken body and your shed blood. In Jesus' name. If you agree with that prayer, say amen. Amen, amen. amen.
praise the name of our God. you to face your left, my right, and as you face, come down the aisle, receive your sacred, and go back down the aisle, take a seat, and we'll eat, and we'll drink together, starting from the rear directions of our ushers, let us come. Sorry, Lord, for the things we've made. 
Cause it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Sorry, Lord, for the things I've made. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. If no one has been overlooked, let us stand all over the building. Those who are watching, let us bow in a moment of personal prayer between you and your God as you take this sacred moment to share. Amen. The Bible said Jesus took bread and he broke it, lifted it up towards heaven, and he blessed it. Gracious and all wise, eternal God in heaven, it's again, we're so grateful for the privilege and the honor to partake of this sacred moment in this season. So I sanctify and I bless this bread. I cause it be means of fellowship. As we partake, God, awaking the Christ-like of you in us. May we commune together. May you know that you live because we live and you live in us. So I bless this wafer, this bread, this cracker, or this toast. And I sanctify it in Jesus' name. And they did eat. Hallelujah. <laughs> Then he took the cup of wine and he lifted it towards heaven and he blessed it. Father, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. God, we thank you for remembering again Resurrection Sunday. <laughs> huh, that you got up off the grave for us, dear Lord, and declared all power in your hands. We thank you, dear Lord, for you said as often as we do this, we do show remembrance of thee. So we thank you, God, because we remember what you did on Calvary. <laughs> we thank you because you're such a good God and such a wonderful God. We thank you for touching us even this morning because we recognize you. And it is our time. So, God, we love you today. And as we bless this cup of wine that represents your shed blood on Calvary. Oh, oh, my God. You didn't have to do it, but you did it anyhow because you loved us so. So we bless it. In Jesus' name, as they did drink, amen.
y'all come on, put your hands together, give the Lord a real praise. They kind of quit on me back there. I don't know what happened. I think they got high off the train. The mic went out. Glory to God. One more time, put your hands together. Or you can do better than that. What an awesome, what an awesome presence of the Lord we had today. I really want to thank God for Pastor Matt. Let's give him a praise. Amen. Flowing in the Lord. It is, it is evident, it is evident that we're already in conference mode. Amen. I'm getting, I'm getting the feedback, Josh. It is evident that we're already in conference mode and no holds bar when it comes to the spirit of the Lord this week. I think we're in a bad spot. Okay, is that better? Thank you so much. And, and, and so I, we need your prayers that God is able to do something supernatural in this season. Uh, there's been a shift. There's, there's been a shift in the spirit realm because there's a calling on our fellowship yeah. and on our church to change lives. We're not here just having church. As usual, we're trying to say that Christianity is a way of life and we're trying to change lives. Had I, had I, <laughs> had I got a chance to preach, <laughs> had I, had not the Holy Ghost had other plans, I was going to talk about Tapping into life and life's abundance. Tapping into life and life's abundance. I don't believe we can represent God unless we can show evidence of his power. And um, Jesus said it this way in John 10 and 10. He says, a thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. He comes to take our glory that we have no evidence of the resurrected Lord. But then this latter verse says, but Jesus says, but I've come that they may have life. And that they may have it more abundantly. And, 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 and I'm not, I'm not going to preach. I'm trying not to preach. But what I'm discovering is this serves you nothing until you find your purpose. See, if you don't know your purpose or the why you come to church, then it's hard for the church to meet your needs. Why did you come? Did you come to be entertained? Why did you come? Did you come because you heard there was a man? Why did you come? Do, what's your purpose? What do you want? And Jesus says, he came that we would have life. I wonder, are you coming that you might have life? And, and if you are, if you hear we discovered that we cannot have this kind of life without divine assistance. You must have the born again experience. You know, I can, I can make you like me or perhaps persuade you or pay you to like me, but it wouldn't give you no power. Every born again Christian or every believer needs to have the born again experience with the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And so when we're talking and we're moving in this area, we want you to have already had a conversation with God. If you haven't had a conversation with God, then you are, you are near sayer, you're near say you're here You just come here to hear what we're saying. But when you've had a talk with God, when you've had a talk with God, he's given you directions and I don't have time but he promised to lead us and guide us into all truth. If you don't have that Holy Ghost experience, you have no tutor or no guide. And so, 
lest I keep going, I want you to do this because your posterity, your lineage is depending on your moment. This season in which you're living so that you could pass something else down. And this is what I need you to do. I need you to start to develop a result oriented mentality. Start to develop a resort, excuse me, a result oriented mentality. What are you saying, Bishop? I, 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 I want to I see the results of what I'm doing. Because if I don't look for the result, then I might be on the wrong path. And we, we, we don't have forever to figure out. And so when you, when you look for results, you get a chance to adjust yourself if it's not working. I'm talking to a guy, I said, I, well, I need you to come. He said, I, I'm coming to church, Bishop, but I, I don't want to promise. He said, I don't want to promise that I'm coming. I said, but I need you to promise. He said, well, no, 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 I don't want to promise because then I feel bad. I said, what? The reason you don't want to promise because the promise demands for you to change. You see, the promise makes you change to fulfill the promise. And the promise works on you while you work on the promise. But if you refuse the promise, then you won't be able to find out what you're missing. Some of y'all need to make some promises to God. And discover where you're weak at. So God can get you strong. You need to make some promise that this week my family going to get along. We ain't going to let the devil steal nothing from the family this week. And then you discover when you can't do it, you might find out where you need to improve. Because you becoming result orientated you think you good because you don't have to prove it you think you love God because you don't have nothing to prove you think it's something in your heart but if you love God you'll keep his command you won't make God your bunny hop you know what I'm saying now, yeah. or your Santa Claus you in love with God. So I'm, I'm here to plead. God, I want to cuss them out, but I can't. I can't. I, I really want to. No, no. Speaking of, I want to cuss them out. But I made a promise that I'll be your vessel. And, and it's, it's, it's right there. It don't work. It don't work, baby. And I, I'm looking at people. I seen folk hanging around. And I said, I don't see no character change. Your character speaks of your destiny. You have to become before you can do. You got to do before you can have. And if you ain't working on your, on your character, then you're going to keep getting the same results. All you can shout and holler. We can put all on you. But that character. So you got to get to me. Like, Lord, did this work? You know, I tried to say I'm sorry, but it don't look like it's working. Well, God, let's show you. Said the reason it didn't work because you said if, if I done something, I'm sorry. Well, how you? If you don't know what, if you done, how you gonna be sorry for it? You haven't come to the conclusion that I've done something to be sorry for, so how can I be forgiven of? So it didn't work. It didn't work. I tried to save my marriage, but it didn't work. I, I told him, I'm, I'm sorry for whatever I said. No, 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 no. You got to find out what went wrong. So you got to become result-oriented. It's a mentality, you know what I'm saying? You know, I, you, if you, well, I'm going to leave that alone. I, I don't know why folk come to church sometimes. I just don't. 
I think they come in here peeping. Trying to see if they could like what's going on. Instead of trying to see if something's going on can help me. You see? You, you need to be in a place. I, I tell you, if, if, if you're the big dog in your group, then you're the dog that won't grow no more. Let me run that back here. I went to the street on you. <laughs> if he's the big dog in our group, and everybody looking at the big dog, we have a chance to grow up to the big dog. But the big dog don't have nobody to grow him. So he stays the same. He misses his, his life. He misses growth. He misses opportunity. He misses joy. He misses, because he's so busy being, he don't have time to become. And you're trying to live off what's on the bottom when you could be reaching up to the top. So we want to create an atmosphere that you are, you are, you are a little fish in a big pond. And you're busy eating so you can grow to be effective in the pond. Does your name say, I'm just asking, I'm just asking. Are you the big dog in your group? You should, you should associate with, if everybody in your group is broke, then there's nobody in your group can help you not be broke. If all your friends are unhappy, there's nobody in your group can help you become happy. It's because we're breaking the mold. I, I, you know, I love to see you shout. I shout. I shout. I've been doing it a long time, but I found out when I got through shouting, I still had the same demons. Still had the same attitude. Some of y'all shouting up here, y'all running around before you get to your car. Somebody gonna get on your nerve. On your nerve. Did you see how she looked at me? That's that's what we have to break. That's that's what God comes. He comes to give us two things. He comes to give us two things. And first thing is he wants us to have his character. And the second thing that we should be in pursuit of is his power. Daughter, you got a child. You have a child. You have a child. Two sons. How old are your sons? Okay, come in for a minute because one's going this way and one's going that way. In the, you understand what I'm saying? But you the mama. And you look at him and you say, that's my child. Lord, have mercy on me. Is that right? You pray for him every day. There is a reason to pray, too. Okay. Stop praying for him and take authority over that's messing with him. God, I'm going to lay my hands on you. But I want you to stop praying for him because you're watching him. I want you to pray to God to release God to work on him. You see the difference? So the power is in God and your relationship with God brings the power to your house. Because you had the born again experience. To come to church. He don't need to come to church. He needs he need that spirit broke off. Because coming here would just only confirm that we all are crazy. You see? It's a mentality. And he want to watch you and he see you. You don't mind me talking to you. I didn't mean to pull you out. Look like you, you're a visitor. Is this the first time you're here? No. Okay. It's not your first time. Is this your second time? My third. Your third. And you haven't joined us yet? No, I've got a church. I'm here for my next Oh, okay. I want a prostate like. Okay. I want a prostate, but I saw some sons. Okay. I saw some children that the Lord is calling you to take authority over. And you need the anointing in your life or your prayers are dry. See, it's not a storybook. 
you the vessel. So ask the Lord to anoint you that your words will become his words and his words always bear power. Does that make sense? Can I just put my hands on your head tell your pastor I'm not trying to proselyte or steal you. I'm going to send you back home. As soon as the baptism is over, you go home. You go home. Praise the Lord. Be a part of the change. Father, I thank you. You're strange, God. You work in peculiar ways. Peculiar ways. It's not by accident she's here. It's not by accident she got to the second row. God bless her. I bless this home. I challenge. I challenge and cancel the iniquity line and call those young men into subjection through the voice of this their mother let your anointing ride with her in Jesus come on give the Lord a praise and so I'm going to shut up anybody that have a car that ran out of gas raise your hand Oh, some of y'all ain't telling the truth. Had a car run out of gas. Car wasn't no good. I don't care how much you paid for it, right? After it ran out of gas. It's like a saint who runs out of or never had an anointing. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you don't have power. I don't care what your doctrines say. That's why we got to get you there, so... We can stretch God's arms out, touch more lives. We all are fighting something. Never come against someone who's struggling because it's only God's grace that keeps us. We don't have the power to keep ourselves. But I want you to develop a result orientated mentality. Some of y'all trying to decide if you're going to pay your tithes. Just look at what you're doing without paying them. Seem like that 100% is cursed. It would be better to have a blessed 90 than a cursed 100. Especially when you're giving 24% to a credit card. How can you tell me you trust God and you're paying 28% to what's that store? Macy's. No, they, they ain't at Nordstrom's yet. You see what I'm saying? That's a lie to yourself. That's, that's the bait of I'm trying to shut up. But I, I want you to miss this. Because it's not a game. It's missing pieces. I want to pause here. I don't know. We got into such a move of God. We're in a conference and no you. I want to say you don't want to miss the conference, but I think we're all sold out. But there may be somebody here who's trying to find an answer. Who's trying to find an answer. Let me tell you where your answer is. To whatever perplexing problem you had, the answer from God is on the inside. Life is lived from the inside out and not from the outside in. If there's something right, it's because it's right on the inside. If there's something wrong, it's because it's wrong on the inside. And so we look within to find solutions to life's problem. We look within. We look within. Praise the name of the Lord. Josh, I know you don't like me messing with you. But when y'all get married, when, when do you think you're going to be ready? How long have you been getting ready? Oh, that kind of ready. You're ready, but you don't have a capital yet. You don't know when you're ready. 
How will you know, Josh? When the last time you asked him? And he ain't said nothing yet? Then what is it? That's a good answer. That's a good answer. You won't know until you ask the right question. The problem with life is that we can't see it because we don't have the right question. Unless you ask the right question, you can never get the answer because the answer is in the question. And if you refuse to ask the question, then you'll never get an answer. People read books, get to the end of the book and don't know nothing they read. Forgot it, 24 hours. Some of them don't even remember from the last chapter. You know why? They forgot to ask the questions. Who, what, when, where, why? Who, what, when, where, why? And sometimes how. How you come to church, you don't ask for who, what, when, where, why, and how. How is God going to speak to me today? What is he going to talk about? Where is it that I need to be to meet him? We gotta stop playing church. You know, a lot of us got two years of experience and 20 years of rehearsal. Because we ain't asked God why yet. I'm through. Let me, let me, let me, if you're here, if you're here, and you, you're in a situation where you feel like there's got to be more. Or maybe there's an answer outside of you. Maybe God can bring you to the place that you're supposed to be. If that's you, and you would like to receive him as a personal savior, join our fellowship, or be filled with the Holy Spirit, or draw closer to him, amen. And even if you belong to another church and you come receive him, his baptism or his understanding, you still can go back to your church. We're just trying to get an answer. Stop telling folk they need to be in church when you can't show them how church has helped you. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Look at your neighbor honestly in the face and say, I'm good. Look in the face and say, I'm good. And then turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, good ain't good enough. You got to be beyond good to be able to represent God. Come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Humble is the way. It's hard for a man to receive God because he has to humble himself. Come on, baby. Bless your heart has to humble himself. Has to humble himself. Is there another? Come on. I know you're here. God, I'm happy to see you here, but I'm more concerned about your life than I am your presence. There's nobody. Okay, tonight, when y'all get to fussing and cussing, Thank you, Jesus. I, I'm starting to get, I told you it was in conference mode. And, can you see in the spirit? Yeah, really? Okay. Spirit is intangible, but its presence is real. And because we are physical vessels, our spirit emanates, comes outside of 
our physical being and show evidence. And those who, are, who can see spirit can look at you and see what the spirit in you is producing on the outside. And even your mouth say one thing, but your aura say something else. Is there another? Bless y'all. Bless y'all. Is there another? Those who would like to receive Jesus as your Savior, salvation, you've never been born again, got to receive him. Maybe you joined the church. I remember back in 19, oh, I'm aging myself right now. 1974, I was, uh, I was a street person. Let's literally leave it at that. I was a street person. And I was sitting in church on a promise. The only reason I was there, not because I went there, I went there on a promise, had my three-piece maxi suit on, big apple hat, green leather suit with a maxi coat, about as half as cool as Brother Turner over there. I was Papa Dog, come in there and on a promise. Something I heard found an empty spot in my heart. And before I knew it, I had left pastor and I was standing at the altar. That's the kind of God you want. That'll take you away from the crap table. No, oh, that's too heavy for y'all. Too heavy. You didn't know Bishop used to... Used to. Now go ahead and say, my bishop smoked weed, so I can smoke it too. No, I said used to, used to, used to. Give it a fancy name, cannabis. It's the same weed. It's cannabis. It's weed. It's weed. Get in your hair particles, everything. It, you know, you still in your mama's basement talking, it ain't bothering me. Well, why are you still in your mama's basement if it ain't bothering? It's recreational, <laughs> but you ain't having no fun. Is there anybody? This is a good week. I believe people coming from, amen, all over, and the Lord's going to visit. But I think the house is ready for you. If you can make that decision, if you, if you can make that decision, if you can make that decision, is there another? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it on. Come on, brother. That's good. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, shucks. Come on. Come on, give him a praise as he comes. Come on. Come on, give the Lord a praise as he comes. Listen, even, listen, come on. He's, he's still here. The Lord is still here. God is good. But he can be only good to the limit you can trust him. You got to trust him. Got to trust him. Hope oh, I Satan. All right. Y'all come a look closer. I want to know if you come to be saved. So good to see you, Sandra. That's your heart, girl. You kept your word too, didn't you? You did? Absolutely. Better late, a little late, but better. that's right. You much closer than you were before you came. Come on, give it up. <laughs> Y'all ought to give a better hand praise than that. She said, I had to fight demons and devils in all episodes. I ran a little late, but I made it anyhow. You don't know what I had to do to get here, but I made it through the gate. Because I believe there is hope yet, in spite of what I've been through. Oh, my God. 
I see a big testimony coming from you, girl. Big, big Y'all got to let me know. I'll be here another hour when we got to go. How many come to be saved? Anybody come to be saved? Praise God. Anybody? Come. Huh? You've been baptized. Have you been saved, though? It's a difference in baptism. You, you accept Jesus. That's, you have. You want to or you have? You have. And you, now you want to reinstate yourself. Praise God. Give the Lord a real praise. Where'd you come from, girl? Okay. Anything specific you want us to pray for? Huh? I figured it was out of place. Well, you know, you might start off with one or two, and then you can put the rest of the list together because you may, you know what I'm saying? You said, Lord, bless me anyway. You bless me. I'm blessing me. But when he bless you, you won't know because you got so many irons in the fire. You don't know if he blessed that one or not. You know what I'm saying? Let's start out with him blessing this baby. And then blessing you with wisdom that will handle your emotions and don't mess up your opportunities. Is that fair enough? Amen. Daughter, what you come? Prayer? I think you want more than prayer. You choked when you got up here, didn't you? What do you really want to be saved? I see three people chasing you. The problem is they are mixed, male and female. The enemy is assigned people to chase you. Oh, you're surprised to see them? That's okay. That's, that's they call that God. And so you in this teeter totter, teeter totter, teeter totter, and you have volition, but you should choose rightly, because life is determined by your choice. They knocked you out, didn't it? <laughs> that, that boy, that boy is bad. Come on, that, that, that boy, that boy is bad. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I see it. I see it. But the attraction is not as important to you as your victory. Don't be caught with the attraction and lose your victory. So you have to choose a path that brings victory and not pleasure. Is that okay? You see what I'm saying? There was a woman at the well. Jesus asked her to give him water. She was a Samaritan. Wasn't supposed to have any dealings with God, Christ. And Jesus said, pour me some water. And she was stung because of the fact that the Jew had relationship with the Samaritan. And Jesus says, where is thy husband? And the woman says, I have none. And Jesus looked at never seen it before. He says, you have rightly answered for you have five and none of them are yours. Not even the one you with now. And she said, I perceive you to be a prophet. I perceive you to be the mouth of God. And when he blessed her, she ran to the city. And told everybody, I met a man. And he told me everything that I ever done. You need to come see this man. When you make the right choice, one of the days you're going to stand up and say it was 2024. April the 7th, I heard the voice of the Lord. And made this. Hey, Shatarababa. Oh, my God, my God. Come on here. Y'all going to make me have church. I told you I was in conference mode. I'm in conference mode. I'm in conference mode. Come on. Come on. Come on. It only hurts for a little while. Right decisions hurt, but they only hurt for a little while. Choose wisely. I got to go. I gotta go.
man of God. The Bible says that the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. And what that means is whatever God called you to be or to do, he will never change his mind about you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, how many mistakes you made? I don't care what any religious person tells. I don't care if the thing is on you to be. If he created you for it, he won't change his mind. But he wait on you to repent. Change your way of thinking and come back. And then he puts you in line. I see God calling you out of that and saying, I got destiny for you got more than church. I got destiny for you. And all those mistakes will become your testimony. <laughs> you sowed your seed and now you're getting your fruit. <laughs> he need the blessing. He need the blessing. I, we're, we're in conference mode. We don't want to act like this on Sunday morning, but you, you know, you sowed the seed, so you sowed the seed. <laughs> Did you hear him? Divine favor. Not favor, just divine favor. Favor beyond just the ordinary. I see you shifting from where you are to employment and to Ownership of business. You're trying to be hired, but I see the day you'll be doing the hiring. <laughs> ah, I got to quit. I got to back up here. I back up here. I got to back up here. Everybody who counted you out, you're going to smile at them later, but you won't be bitter because they haven't had the experience of what you can. I just lay my hands on you. Father, in Jesus' name, be it as I've spoken. Give him a testimony. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Sandra, let me, can I just pray for you? Renew it, Lord. Renew her relationship. Let her know everything she's been through is covered by the blood. And the blood still works. It still works. It still, it still works. I bind the works of hell, the spirit of hell, the spirit of darkness. I cancel your assignment. I take authority over you in the name of Jesus. I break every habit and I change her environment that the glory of God can come to her life in Jesus' name. You are loved. You are loved. You are loved. Well, I'm guessing I'm done. It's in your hands, you know that, right? Y'all good? What is this? This is a girl, boy. It's a girl. Okay, broke your heart. Huh? See that? I'm sorry. You just thought she was bad that night. He's making a man turn out to be a girl. God had purpose in her. He didn't want her to be a man. She got some stuff that grandma put on her that God needs to break that's in the lineage. And it takes a woman to do it. So be happy about it, okay? Don't let it steal your joy. Like, I didn't get what I want. No, you got what you needed was the ministry of the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Father, I thank you for healthy child in Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a real praise. Can y'all go that way? Just all of you, just walk that way. Thank you so much. I'm done. Co-pastor's coming. She's giving us directions over there, so I'm going to let her come. Say what, baby? Those who've gotten in late. I don't know how I could have gotten late today. <laughs> Those who've gotten in late didn't get a chance to worship the Lord and you're giving. And you, it's personal. You would like to do that. Would you come at this time? Bring your offerings to the Lord. It's personal. Amen. Amen. Do we have one? Come this way.
Man, God is good. Y'all pray for this conference. Pastor is coming with the benediction. Close remarks. Come on, let's give our bishop a hand. Didn't God move for us today? I told you it's today. Amen. You don't have to wait. Amen. Those that are getting baptized, let me do this first. You can stand and come up to the front so we can get you ready for your family and friends to go across the street and support you if you know them. Amen. Go with this Elder Adrian. Here they are. Stand just right there. That's good, baby. Here she comes. Amen. Oh, look at God, you all. Come on. About seven people. Come on. Let's thank God for them. Amen. Amen. You'll be following her across the street after we dismiss those that are uh, supporting them or the family members. You'll be going across the street. Don't we thank, give him another hand clap of praise. Thank you all. This is worth overtime. Y'all think a game is good when God bless you. Come on, let's give God a praise. Thank God for passing Matt, Lady T, Bishop being obedient. We just thank God. Amen. Amen. We're going to, um, I just want the visitors stand real quick before I say this next thing. Would you visitors stand all over the house? We thank God for you. Would you stand right now so we can love on you a minute? Turn around, Fountain family. There's a lot of them. Look at God. Come on. Come on. Let's hug on them. Let's love on them. We pray that you were blessed. We pray that God did something in your life. Amen. We pray there's a change coming. We pray that you come back and see us and visit with us again. As Bishop said, we don't want to cross the light, but hey, we got some stuff over here too. And we just want, if you ever want to come back, amen, and just visit with us, we thank God for you. We thank God for our, amen, Facebook, Instagram, amen, YouTube audience. We thank God for each of you just hanging in there with us. Thank God for our communion. Thank God for our praise and worship team. Thank you, John, for taking over. Thank you, darling. Thank you, pray. Guys, you just got ready at conference move. Y'all did so well. Thank you, musicians. Look at all the visitors. Come on, let's give them another hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Just want to let you know, ladies, if you registered, the registration packages are here. You don't have to wait till Thursday. There, the ladies are here at the table with the boxes. Amen. For your bags, you have your registration. Uh, uh, lanyard in your bag, please, you need it to get in, amen, so don't leave your bag at home, <laughs> bring it with you, so we know that you are re registered, amen, um, and if you forgot it, we got to get your name, get you a uh, duplicate, something, okay, <laughs> we just want to let you know, and just so you know, it's not too late, come on, give God a hand clap of praise, it may cost you more, <laughs> we have night passes, each night, Thursday night, is only $49. Say $49. You, you can get that. You don't get a bag or anything, but you get to come and be blessed. On Friday night, say $49. You don't get a bag again, <laughs> but you get to be blessed. That's more for, worth more than any bag. And then on Saturday, it's $49, but you don't get a lunch because we're full. We got over 360 people registered. Did y'all hear what I just said? Amen. And you can have T-shirts. Not have. You can buy T-shirts <laughs> after service. And they're going to come in pink and black. It's your time. Amen. They're only $30 up to 3X. If you have special orders, it's too late for that now. It is too late because we told you to call her earlier, but come on, we got <laughs> small to three X. Come on, let's get our, she's an awesome t-shirt lady, Deacon Loretta France. They're going to be in that room behind, amen, to give you a t-shirt, so make sure you get that, amen, before you leave, amen. Um, we're going to have our luncheon across the street with the one and only Bishop Michael Jones in our event center in the lower level. Come on. Amen. So we just thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. And we know we're running late, but we need your help because we got to set up. So men, you can help. Ladies, you can help. <laughs> we got some work to do. But let's thank God for the anointing again. Come on. I think I got everything. And look at those souls got saved. Y'all, come on. Look at the souls got saved. The people going to be, that's the best thing that we could have ever did. 
to bring some, snatch somebody out of hell and bring him into Jesus. Come on. That's worth more than anything. So I'm just thankful for the obedience and that uh, Bishop allowed us to be free. And uh, Bishop got up and did his thing still. Let's thank God for our bishop. I love you, baby. Almost 54 years, this July the 18th. And I'm still trying to look good for him, y'all. Come on. Y'all better stand up. I'm the one. Ah! Oh, come on, Matt, close. Come on, then we have a great time standing to our feet. I do want to say, come on, clap it up for our leaders. We, we are leaving. Um, I just want to ask if there's any men and women who have a little more time to help us. We're going to set up for the luncheon across the street. We also have our baptism. We're going straight into baptism. But if you're not going to baptism and you have about 20 to 30 minutes just to help us put the tables down and move the chairs, if you can, we're asking that you come across the street and go to the lower level to help us. If you have plans, if you have something to do, we understand. But ladies and men, because we're going to decorate and throw the tables up, if you have some time, we're asking that you come help us get prepared for the week. Amen. And tell somebody, look at your neighbor and say, no pressure. But if you have time, we are family. Let's pray, okay? Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory. Thank you for giving us a family, a place that listens to you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for keeping us. We thank you that you have encouraged us and reminded us of who you are and who we are because we're submitted to you. We thank you that you've broken the chains of the enemy on us. And we thank you that we will go and be doers of the word and not just hearers only. And we thank you, God, that we're going to take our one shot at life and make it our best. Dismiss us from this place. But we thank you that we dwell in your presence. Allow us to have an amazing day and an amazing week. We ask for a continual outpour over this place, over this week, God, that miracles, signs, wonder, and deliverance take place all week long. We would do all we can to serve you, show up, and to help out because we just want to see you glorified and lifted up. We give you praise, honor, and glory. Bless our food we're about to go eat. Let it be so good today. Anoint the chefs that's cooking it. Anoint us to make it and anoint us to pay for it. Let it just, let today just be a beautiful day. As your sun shines all week, let us breathe in your joy and our freedom in you. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name. Last thing, y'all, everybody say amen.